morning, everyone. I'm Andrea Trimarchi, and I'm a co-founder of Forma Fantasma, together with Simone Farezin, a design studio based in Milan and Rotterdam. And I'm here at the Design Museum in Finland to uh, present you, very informally, probably, <laughs> hopefully, uh, the new exhibition that we are presenting here. This is called Cambio on Finnish Forestry. Uh, Cambio is an exhibition that we, as a studio, started uh, in 2019. What is a research uh, uh, project that has been uh, first uh, commissioned by the Serpentine Gallery in, in London. And then it travelled, fortunately, in a very different location from uh, the Pecci Museum in uh, Florence to the Design Museum in Switzerland and now here in Finland. Something important to know before even to go uh, into the context uh, and the content of the exhibition is that we conceive the exhibition as travelling since the beginning, but also since the beginning we thought that the exhibition should have been uh, adding new content every time we would travel. So to be very contextual on the place where we were, uh, the exhibition was uh, being um, hosted. And the uh, Cambia exhibition, it's a, a very long research project that we started in 2018 on the uh, governance of the timber industry. And in a way, as a design studio, we're very interested to understand the, um, all the logistical and political and uh, social economic structure that there is around the design discipline. And Cambio, it's a very good example on how you can do research in a more commercial studio. The name Cambio refers to a specific layer of the tree trunk uh, that sits between the bark and the inner side of the tree that is called Cambia layer or Cambio in Italian or <coughs> Cambia layer in uh, international language, Latin. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, this layer, uh, it's very important because it's the one that uh, makes the tree uh, standing and the tree um, also adapting to very different situations. And it's actually the layer that allows the plant coming from the sea to really adapt to the um, terrain uh, environment. So for us, the name Cambio, it's also very important and indicative to show this like adaptation that a tree has been having since, uh, you know, thousands of years ago. Um, Cambio on Finnish forestry, it's uh, <clears throat> the chapter that we are doing here, thanks also to the collaboration we are having with uh, uh, Artec, uh, so the Finnish brand Artec, and of course also with the Design Museum uh, Helsinki, that uh, in a way focus on the long and rich uh, tradition of uh, timber that you have here in, uh, in Finland. Uh, so the exhibition uh, has the same structure of the one that we did at the uh, Serpentine and, uh, and so on, but uh, I would say that every chapter that we added are, are, is more, much more contextual and focusing on certain aspects of the Finnish uh, context. So maybe I would start uh, with the first artwork that you can see here. That it's a very large frame, uh, frame that is uh, done uh, in pine wood, actually coming from clear cutting. And then I'm going to explain more about the clear cutting. What it frames, it's uh, one of the most important uh, painting that you have here in uh, Finland that is called uh, Under the Yoke. That is a work from uh, the, uh, uh, around the beginning of the last century from Hero Jarenfels. And um, the pine, as you know, is one of the most common uh, species that is uh, actually cultivated here in, in Finland. The painting uh, is actually depicting um, some peasant in the countryside. They are like uh, uh, doing like slash and burn um, acting. That is a, a way of like um, uh, using the, the land and to actually enriching the soil thanks to the act of burning. This kind of act that was like very common uh, in the past in Finland is uh, actually coming from uh, an observation on how the natural cycle of forest works here in Boreal Forest. Boreal Forest, for the people who don't know, is actually the forest they are like present here in the northern uh, Europe. Um, in the last period, in the last 100 years, this kind of act that it was also a very good one because it was enriching um, the, the soil, it was making the, uh, the ground very fertile, has been substituted with the act of like clear cutting. That is a much more violent way of like doing agricultural and doing plantation because of course it removed completely all the ecosystem present in the, uh, uh, in the soil. And of course, we put close to it a very important document that is a forest act that had been uh, done uh, around 1996 that 
finally have been uh, introduced now in the Finnish uh, legislation. What, what this like Forest Act is entailing is that um, people can, uh, do, can use different way of like cultivating that is not uh, using clear cutting, but you can use also different kind of way of cultivating, for instance, like selecting logging and so on. This work, in a way, is a comment on how entangled is the uh, production of culture, in this case, like national identity, uh, uh, in the case of like under the yoke, and how the production of, of goods and uh, object is very entangled with the culture. The second work we are going to have here, it's another comment on how in the recent time and in historical reason that shaped the for Finnish industry. And this work is called um, Tar, uh, Birch and Agent Orange. And it's a film that has been done thanks to uh, a flipping, uh, in a in form of flipping, flipping book. And of course, use paper. That is, uh, I also forgot to say before, is the major, is the most important industry uh, nowadays in, in Finland. That is really shaping uh, all the ecosystem of the of the country. And of course, with charcoal. That, as you know, charcoal is uh, coming, of course, from from wood. Um, Something you need to know that um, the majority of uh, forests uh, in Finland are uh, of birch and more recently of course on pine because of this relation with, uh, with paper. But there have been a moment in history in which birch had been completely eradicated because uh, the tar industry was so important in, uh, in the country that um, birch it was almost a weed, you know, was growing everywhere with no control. Um, something that the government did at the, in the last century is like spraying all over the, uh, the, the region <coughs> Agent Orange. That is a fertilizer that <coughs> practically uh, killed completely all the birch plantations. Um, this of course caused a lot of problems, especially for the Sami community, in, uh, uh, be and because armed a lot of livelihood of, of those um, um, uh, of those Aboriginal uh, communities. And um, the, uh, this changed, of course, in the last century because also of the uh, reintroduction of birch as a very important species. Birch is a very sturdy uh, material, is a very strong wood. Um, it's used both for the production of, uh, of uh, objects but also, of course, for the production of paper. So in a way, there is, again, as before, an entanglement between the production and the shaping of a forest. And this work shows how this relation happened, also historically. And maybe just to say a few words, as I said before, it's a flip book. Uh, and it shows this, um, uh, the environment of where the trees are growing. And also there is like this like, uh, ongoing uh, felling of trees that you can see in the, in the movie. So we go ahead with uh, another important work that is called The Origin of the Species, and you can see her on the, on the right. This is an adaptation of an existing work that we did originally for the Serpentine Gallery in London, and actually it's a forensic analysis that we did in collaboration with the Tunan Institute. Something that I also didn't mention before uh, is that Cambio is an important work because uh, in a way it's a, it's a collective work. It's a collective work because, of course, entails the uh, collaborative um, endeavor that we have with the people in the studio, but especially with the people that collaborated with us uh, at large for the development of the work. So we collaborated with the Kew uh, Garden, with the Tunian Institute in Germany, uh, with Emanuele Kocha, that is a philosopher. I would say that the, the, uh, the Cambio is a very a choral, choral work. And this specific work, The Origin of the Species, it's a work that has been produced in collaboration, as I said before, with the Tunian Institute. What we did is to make them analyze one of the most common books that you can find in, uh, uh, in the world, that is uh, indeed like uh, the Charles Darwin, uh, The Origin of the Species. And what we did is to really trace which is the origin of the species of the paper content. And um, something that you need to know that uh, the paper industry is one of the most arming and also one of the most diffusing, uh, diffused um, production that happen like in forests nowadays. And there are a few uh, regions where this is happening. Of course, Asia, around China, then there is like the boreal forests of Finland uh, and Northern Europe and Russia, and of course also the uh, South America. Um, but 
only a few species are very good for the production of paper. And of course those are pine and uh, birch and um, also, uh, I will get there, uh, eucalyptus. Eucalyptus it is a very fast growing species. So what we did is to uh, take some sample of each of these books. They are coming from all the world, from China, Australia, uh, Japan, uh, Finland, etc. And make them analyze to understand if the uh, environment where the, the paper is produced and the books is printed is the same of the one of production. So uh, we made analyze the one of Finland and it's very interesting to see that all the paper contained uh, comes from pines pine wood that they emerge, so it's something that is really like happening here. But some very important discovery instead happened in, um, in South America, in Brazil. So we have like some Brazilian wood that actually contain eucalyptus. Brazil, as I said before, is, the, is the one of the biggest uh, player in the production of paper. Eucalyptus is actually paper, uh, a tree that grows especially uh, in Australia. This means that the entire ecosystem of the Amazon forest has been substituted from local tree to eucalyptus that is not a, uh, a local tree. Again, this work is a way shows how uh, wood and, and trees are traveling around the world and, and how these are influencing very badly, in some cases badly or in some cases not, the uh, forest that we see today. Uh, another work that has been done uh, very contextually to the, um, for this exhibition it is this movie that is called Metza. And um, the film addressed the history and development of forest and forest management practice in, in Finland. So this has been shot with uh, the help of a very talented um, Finnish um, artist and photographer, you see. Um, with infrared photography. So this technique is mainly used by scientists and research to analyze vegetation and wetland and to see the health of this um, vegetation. It becomes red when actually uh, the, uh, there is like photosynthesis. So when there is like this production of uh, leaves and uh, uh, exchange of, of oxygen and CO2. What we did is, in a way is to look at a context of 200 kilometers radius um, around the factory of the A uh, um, factory of Artec and we look into how that forest around the factory is influenced by the big player of the paper industry and actually the small player of, uh, of Artec because of course Artec for the people doesn't know it's a very um, tiny important company for shaping the uh, Finnish tradition and the, the Finnish local uh, um, context uh, that have been founded in the 30s by Alvaro Alto and uh, Aino Alto. And uh, uh, this movie in a way shows also all the tension that there is between a very big industry and a tiny one of the, uh, small one I would say, of the, uh, of Artec. So if we go ahead in the presentation of the pieces, we have another very important piece that is called uh, Stool 60. And, um, and of course, what shows are a, a pile of like uh, stools, a very conic stool from Alvaro Alto, um, done in bent wood. Uh, these pieces actually come from uh, the Design Museum uh, here in, uh, 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 in Helsinki, but also from the A factory. Uh, and also the second cycle. So let's say that there is a mix of different sources. And something that is important about this work um, that shows how the, uh, the, um, the life of an object should outlive the uh, life of a tree. So to have a perfect balance between the production of CO2, sorry, the oxygen, and the intake of CO2, so when actually a, a tree actually gets the CO2 and is releasing oxygen in the environment, needs to be a perfect balance. And each tree has a different lifespan and different maturity. Um, birch, that is the material in which these like, beautiful stools are produced, actually have a surface life of 60 years. So it means that a rich maturity when he's 60 years. What we are proposing here is that objects that are like surrounding us should outlive, should live at least as much as the tree is growing. This is happening already because something that uh, Artec is doing brilliantly uh, with, for instance, second cycle is to um, 
gather material uh, and objects they are um, from people that really love those objects but they don't want to throw it away and what they do is to adjust it taking care of it and reselling it again so really prolonging the life of, of the object um, yeah so this work really speaks about uh, how much an object should uh, live speaking about uh, duration and life of an object we go almost to the opposite um, and this work is called 52 years and it's, it's composed by very throwaway material like paper and cardboard and pallet and a very instead uh, sturdy and uh, uh, important piece uh, of our tech. 52 years actually refer about the fact that uh, one tree, a specific pine in Finland, would take 52 years to um, absorb the CO2 contained in this object. The majority of these objects actually, as we know, are packaging. So packaging are material that usually are thrown away after one use. And in a way it's also a comment on how the paper industry should change and going from a, a production of a material that is like thrown away to much more long-lasting uh, application. Uh, if we continue uh, um, here on the, on the exhibition, we have an important table and, uh, and it's called this, uh, this piece on the development of bad food and shows uh, archival uh, images and archival pieces. It comes from very different sources, from the Alvarado Foundation, the uh, museum, uh, Design Museum Helsinki, <coughs> Artec and Second Cycle. It shows how uh, the, um, th there is this very strong entanglement between the history of Artec and uh, the, um, the forest. You know, Arctic would not have lived, uh, would not exist if forests in Finland would not exist. And um, something that was happening around the, uh, last, uh, the beginning of last century is the development of the technique of the bent food that happened especially in uh, uh, Austria, um, thank, thanks to Tone. And of course, here yeah, we have like one of the historical Tone chairs. Um, of course, the Tone chair is done with a different materiality than the one of, uh, of Arctic. But, um, you know, when the development of the bending of the wood happened in the, uh, in the north of Europe, um, our, the fin Finland didn't have the right kind of wood because birch, as I said before, was the very most common um, material available. And um, actually, birch is not a material that is easy to bend. So, Artec had to invent a way of bending this tree. And then they developed this very famous uh, leg that is, uh, you know, the, I would say the iconic piece of, of Artec and also of Finland that, you know, produced the same effect of bending but working on a completely different way than uh, the tonnet chairs that we saw before. And this table, in a way, is uh, going through um, some of the steps of this uh, bending technique and also showing a bit uh, how it works and uh, <clears throat> the kind of like uh, effort that needs to be done in order to get to the amazing uh, result of these of these pieces. Going ahead in the exhibition, we are going towards a different work. Uh, maybe we do like a bit of a pause, uh, talking about how the, we do uh, research in the studio. <clears throat> we do through a lot of uh, in-field research a lot of interviews. Um, here we have a few that have been conducted in Finland. Um, for instance, to Anti, that is working at the factory and the Arctic uh, second cycle. Uh, then we have Yuka, they work uh, at the, and um, Eriku, they work at the uh, factory, at the A factory uh, in Turku. Uh, we spoke also, of course, with uh, Kaiser Artio, uh, that is he, uh, is associate professor in environmental communication at the Swedish University, and is a, is, it's a kind of, a, it's an activist. They, uh, they really look at the Finnish forestry with a completely different lenses. And uh, Anti, uh, that is um, one of the uh, owner, the three owners of the sawmill where Artec uh, get all the wood from. These are only four of the, uh, you know, 20s and more interviews that we conducted for uh, the research into Finnish forestry. And all the videos actually are uploaded on cambio.website, that is like a platform that we are using uh, to collect all the research that we are doing through um, the research of Cambio. So, 
if we go ahead instead, the, uh, the other work is called Under the Canopy, but we need to go from the other side. So bear with me. <laughs> Come with me now. Yes, please follow me. So Under the Canopy presents a selection of uh, aerial view. Maybe we can go here. Um, and archival images showcasing the changes that have been taking place in the peatlands of Finland since the 90s to today. So peatlands are very important ecosystem for Finland. Um, they are not like forest, you know, they are like very uh, low um, grow um, uh, ecosystems where different species are um, living, they are wetland actually. That in the recent times, because of this development of uh, this quite aggressive uh, plantation-based economy, have been um, substituting uh, wetland. And the uh, image that you see here, of course, is done also uh, again with this satellite view and with um, these uh, red, um, um, uh, red views. This shows how uh, lively are actually this environment. And this is just a pose with uh, historical images uh, from the Finn archive um, that shows how this like, wetland has been drained in the last hundred years to give space to, to plantation. Of course, causing a lot of problem um, for, the, uh, for the natural ecosystem. Um, if we go ahead, we can um, instead see two work. They are um, talking about uh, legislation. And maybe we can, we can move here. Uh, but before to maybe see this, they actually are the result. You can see the back of the of this wound divider, where they are uh, shown. I would say the, between the ten of the most important legislation that be done internationally to protect the ecosystem of the forest. So I make a few examples like the uh, um, uh, forest action statement and action plans from the Climate Summit 2014 uh, from UN the Convention on Biological Diversity from the United Nations in 1992, and uh, the Paris Agreement uh, of 2015, and the FSG International Standard. So they are like all um, legislation that in a way protect either the production of goods from forests or protect the environment of the forest. Um, for Cambio, we collaborated with uh, Philip Papber, uh, Philip Pogberg is a uh, lawmaker from the uh, Free University of, uh, of Amsterdam. And what he does with his students in, in Amsterdam is actually producing legislation. So when we went there, we asked him, like, why don't we push you know, this exercising of making legislation? And we tried to make articles that are not only protecting the forest, but giving grants and rights to, uh, to the forest as an ecosystem. And uh, here what we have, there are three different documents that could actually could never be applied uh, from, from his uh, opinion uh, because uh, none of them, even the most simple one, that is the International Convention on the Conversation Use and Equitable Sharing of Forest Ecosystem. So this is like, I would say, it's the most easy one to apply, but even a, a law like this, it's almost impossible. This one actually um, shows how ecosystems go beyond the natural uh, borders. Um, you know, if you think about Amazon, Amazon, or even like the Boreal Forest, it's like touching upon very different countries and regions of the world. But of course, we are still looking at uh, ecosystem of forests like very nationally. So the Amazon forest from Brazil, the Amazon forest from Ecuador, etc. What this international convention is a way over, over um, stepping national borders. So of course you already see how this would be very impossible to, to have. The second one is the Amsterdam Protocol of Reducing Deforestation and Forest Degradation. Again, it's a step further on the, in the understanding of what, how it works an ecosystem. To go to the last one, that is a Universal Declaration of the Right of Trees. So this has been actually copying the Universal Declaration of the Human uh, Rights. Uh, in a way, gives to plants and to trees the, um, the status of uh, living beings. We all know that, of course, trees have an intelligence, and I mean, we have an amazing book like the one of Stefano Mancuso or the book of Emmanuel Lecoccio, the, the, um, the philosopher, they speak about the intelligence of plants. But this document, I think, is one of the key elements in the exhibition. This shows how actually um, 
you know, trees as are sentience and they are thinking and they are uh, producing and working for us. Of course, they are working on us and they are sustaining our existence in this planet. And the last work in the exhibition is actually called Quercus and uh, it's originally been shown for the first time in uh, uh, at the Serpentine Gallery in London and is a collaboration that we had uh, with um, Emerald Ecocha. And I would say that for us, it, of course, it's one of the most uh, beautiful and powerful uh, video in the exhibition. And what this uh, video talk about is actually a tree that speaks back to human. It's actually a Quercus from uh, a forest in Amer North America. And Kocha text, that, so Kocha wrote also text. Kocha text question our, our sense of dominance, observing rather the degree to which humanity is dependent upon the form and physicality of trees from the perspective and image forest. So it suggests a crucial shift in perspective uh, if we are to find more radical way of living with and protecting this complex ecosystem, one that stems from the understanding that human and trees are inextricably interlinked. So what we did is to animate a forest and to make a single tree speaks. So as you see, uh, you cannot hear it, but uh, it's a kind of distorted voice of a, a, of a female. So you don't understand which kind of like a, a gender this voice has. And it speaks back to human and put in question who actually conquer who. Is it like human that conquer the forest or is the forest that conquer the humans and vice versa. And this uh, video has been produced by, by LiDAR, that is a very specific technology that nowadays is used in forestry practice to do selective logging. But we use it, you know, to animate actually this forest. And the way also the animation work look of on a very completely di different perspective than the usual one of the human. So the camera sometimes has a human view, but sometimes it reverses completely. So the, the camera goes completely under the ground or within the tree. So in a way, it's also I wanted to um, to show how communication and how certain kind of tools of exploitation, the case of lighter, can also be used to uh, as a narrative um, element. So this is the exhibition. I hope you will be able to to see it for real here in uh, in Helsinki. Of course, if you are more interested, uh, there is still some copy available of the, of the catalog that you can find online. There is the website, can be the website, and of course, you are more than welcome to come here to Helsinki to see the uh, exhibition. Thank you for following.